All right, guys. So um, I entitled this Follow Me and I Will Make You Fishers of Men. So, you know, we've talked a lot about what, you know, Christ, when he came, we talked about the beginning of Matthew where uh, Matthew proves, he proves the lineage. He proves that that Jesus is the the one who's supposed to be king. He's from the seed of David. He's from the seed of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Uh, and we know that the promises was made to who? To Abraham and his seed, which was Christ. And so, and, and we know that, that when he was growing up as a child, that he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. We know that that God the Father guided his entire life, right? His childhood. And then by the time he got to his baptism, which was his anointing, him being anointed the king of Israel. Um, and we know that he was anointed king because God says this is, he opened heaven, right? The spirit abode upon him, just like the spirit ab abode upon David when he was anointed king by, by Samuel. And he said, this is my son whom I'm well pleased. And we know he takes him up into the wilderness. He's tempted. He, 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 uh, he forsakes Satan. He forsakes this world. And uh, he comes down in power. And he comes down in power. And then he, what, sets up his government. He starts, he chooses Peter and, and John and all of his apostles, right? And then he teaches them. He takes them away and he teaches them. He, he, he does away with the Levitical priesthood. He does away with all the ordinances, and 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 what does he do with the moral law? Anybody remember? He fulfilled it. Well, he well he he fulfilled it. But what did he do when he says it was written of old, "Thou shalt not commit adultery"? Oh, he changed it. Yeah, he. Um, it, it's. It, it, I'm trying to think of the word. Um, he fulfilled was, the law. He changed it was the time. It was the time of what of. Um, Oh my goodness, my brain's not working. In other words, he changed. He changed it, right? He. Um, <laughs> yes. I cannot remember the word. Okay, so anyway, he said it was written of old, "Thou shalt not commit commit adultery." But I say unto you, right, mm -hmm. that whoever looketh upon a woman have committed adultery to lust after have committed adultery. Right. So, so he made the law his law because <laughs> he's now the king. We're not under Moses' law, are we? We're under our king's law. And so, so anyway, let's let's read the context and I'm going to show you why Christ came. And it was to teach you how to do something, okay? Yes. And he says, and and the Lord said unto Noah, Come thou and all thy house into the ark, for thee, Noah, have I seen righteous before me in this generation, and every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by sevens the male and his female, and of beasts that are not clean by two, the male and his female, of fowls also of the air by sevens, the male and the female, to keep seed alive upon the face of all the earth, for yet seven days, and I will cause it to rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights, and every living substance that I have made will I destroy from off the face of the earth. And Noah did according to all that God commanded him. And so, so what we're going to see today is because Noah did all these things, right? But what, but I'm going to show you what really saved Noah. Okay. Was it, did, did these things save Noah when he did, when he built the ark that did save him, right? No. Well, it did save him from, it saved, yeah. it saved his life in one sense, but we want to see that you're saved by something else. And that's what that's by what? Faith. I, by faith. So by faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet, he moved, he prepared, and he was saved. Right. So he believed God. And when he believed God, he moved, he prepared, and it saved him and it saved his house, right? Right. And something happened when that happened. Something happened when Noah moved with fear and prepared. But the thing that saved him was his faith. Right. You have to believe. If you don't believe there's going to be a flood, are you going to prepare? No. No. 
if you don't believe that you've got anything to worry about, if you're a believer and you don't think that you have anything to worry about at the judgment seat of Christ, is there any reason for you to move or to prepare? No. Oh, and, and, and what is taught in most uh, every church in the entire world, that when you believe upon Jesus as your Savior, you have yep. zero things to worry about. Right. Everybody. And, that, and that's exactly what the Baptist church teaches. Exactly. That when you believe, there now you have no reason to what? Move. You have no reason to prepare because you are what? Saved. Right. But yet Noah, when he believed, what did he do? He moved. He moved, he prepared, and he saved his family. But you're not saved by the moving and the preparing. And I'm going to show you, I'll show you exactly what I mean here in a second, okay? Because he says, when he saved his house, he did he did something. He condemned the world, and he became heir. How did he become heir? Was it by the, the moving and the preparing? He became heir of the righteousness, which is what? By faith. Was it by moving and preparing, or was it by, it was by what? By faith. By faith. So you become heir by faith. Let, now let me show you. Let me show you Abraham. He says, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, "Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward." And Abram said, "Lord God, what wilt thou give me, seeing I go childless?" So Abram, Abram and Sarah had how many children at this point? They didn't have any, did they? And see, I'm, I'm childless, and the steward of my house is this Eleazar of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold to me, thou hast given what? No seed. So God had not given him a seed. And lo, one born in my house is my what? Heir, right? Yes. So his inheritance, when he died and he, didn't, he was childless, guess who his inheritance would have went to? It would have went to this man right here, right? Because he didn't have any seed. Right. And then God says, and behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, this shall not be thine heir. But, and here's the promise, he that shall come forth out of thine own what? Bowels. But he's going to be your heir. So he, God is making a promise to him that, He's going to have a child. It's going to be his seed. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. So Abraham, even though you don't have a child right now, you're going to have seed. And, and that seed is going to eventually be as what? The stars. You're not going to be able to what? No. Even though he didn't have a child at that moment. Remember what faith is? The evidence of things what? Not seen. Mm -hmm. So he says, so shall thy sight seed be. Now look what it says about Abram. And Abram, he what? Believed. And he counted it. Counted what? what's it? His faith, his belief for what? Righteousness. So God counts faith as righteousness. He doesn't count works as righteousness. Watch this. What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh have found? For if Abraham were what? Yes. Justified by works, he hath whereof to glory. So if we could be justified before God by good works, we could glory and say, look, look what my works did. In other words, I'm, I can do so many good works and I will be what? Justified in the sight of God. Right. But are, can you be justified in the sight of God by your works? No way. No way. Can't do it. Because you'd have to keep how much of the law? All of it. Yeah. If you keep the whole law and offend at one point, you're guilty all. So you can't be justified by your works. Then there would be no you were justified. Your, by, huh? There would be no need of Christ to die if we if we could be justified by our works, and that's what we're going to see in just a second. That it will, yeah, there was. It, that's exactly what that the, that is exactly what the scripture is going to tell you. He says, if Abraham were justified by works, he he could glory, right? Yes. But he couldn't glory before God because you can't you can't be justified 
by works. You have to be justified by what? Faith. Because God counts your faith as what? Righteousness. Righteousness. So for what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, right? He had faith in God, and it, his faith, was counted unto him for what? Righteousness. Not his works, his faith. Right. Now look what he says. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. So if you're working for your righteousness, you're, right. you're in debt to God because you can never what? You can right. never do enough work to be found righteous in the sight of God. Right. But to him that worketh not, but believes on him that justifies of the ungodly. So if you don't work, but you believe, your faith is counted for what? Righteousness. So what a lot of believers like to do is they like to say, see, we don't have to what? Work. We don't have to work. And I'm going to show you in a minute what work is for. Okay, work is not to count. Work is not to be used to make yourself righteous, but work has a purpose. He says, even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness, without what? Works. Without works. God counts your faith as righteousness. You right. believe in God. So when God says you do something, God says, guess what? Noah built the ark and Noah believed him and God counted that as what? Righteousness. Right. So the question is then what, if the works, he doesn't count the works as righteousness, what are the works for? He says not by works of what? Righteousness. which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. Now, we understand something up here, right? We understand, let's look at Noah. Noah became heir, and what's the heir? The heir is the person that has the right inheritance. to the inheritance, right? Yeah. If you're a child, you are the what? Heir. Heir. And he became heir, not by the by building the ark. He came be, became heir by what? Faith. By faith. So what did the works do? We're gonna, I'm going to show you what the works of what? The works, God does not let you into the kingdom because of your works. But guess what you have to do? You got to work. Yeah. Now watch this. He says, um, it's, he says the heir, I say that the heir, right? And Noah was an heir, right? Yes. As long as he's a child, differeth nothing from a what? Servant. Okay, so let's think about this for a second. When the children placed the blood of the lamb on the doorpost in Egypt, right? Yes. Let me, let me, let me, let me ask you, okay, let me ask you a question. When they placed the blood, they did it in what? Faith. They did it in faith. There was no works. All they do is put blood on the doorpost, right? And stay in your house. So was their faith strong enough when they came out of there? Why did he not just take them straight up to the land of Canaan and kill the giants and take the land? Mm -hmm. To prove their faith. Because, because their faith wasn't perfect, was it? Right. We know it wasn't perfect because as soon as they got out by the Red Sea, guess what happened? The tram wanted to go back. <laughs> they were ready to go back because and here comes Pharaoh and they're 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 fearing for their life, right? Mm -hmm. And was it and even after they went through the Red Sea, was it perfect? No, because as soon as they got in the wilderness, they started complaining about not having food and not having water. Right. So what so what is the works for? He says, the promise that he should be, talking about Abraham, the heir of the what? World. Was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law or through the works of the law, right? Right. But through the righteousness of what? Faith. 
So to you becoming heir and getting into the kingdom isn't through your works. It's through the righteousness which comes. Do you believe God? And you say, yes, I believe God. I believe that God has told me to build the ark, right? right. Building the ark does not make me what? Righteous. Okay. God doesn't count building the ark as righteousness. He counts your faith as righteous. He says, if they which are of the law, right? If by doing works, you become the heir to the, you're the you have the right to the inheritance through works. Faith is what? Void. void. It's void. It's a none effect. You don't get the inheritance through works. If, if you get the inheritance through works, then Christ, what did you say, uh, Patricia? Christ yeah. died in vain. Exactly. And that's what he's going to tell the Galatians, okay? Because here's, here's what happened. That when you first believed upon Jesus, before you believed upon Jesus, you know what you were doing to try to get into the kingdom? Or what, what you were trying to do to find favor with God? Working, trying to keep the law. You were trying to do all these good works, right? You were trying to do good works and saying, if I do more good works than bad works, and if I do this, God will, I will be righteous. And and guess what you found out? It wasn't so. It wasn't so. Christ is our righteousness, right? And so, so here's what happened was the Galatians... After they believed upon Jesus and received and, and under, they finally understood that it wasn't of works, right? So they believed upon Jesus by faith alone, no works. But then somebody come along and trick them into believing. Now you're going to get into the kingdom by works, right? So look, look what he says. Oh, foolish Galatians, because he's talking to the church at Galatia, right? right. Who have what? Who reached you. Who's charmed you, right, to please to such a degree as to take away the power of resistance, to deceive and mislead by tricks, right? Who, who's tricked you, Galatians, that you should not obey the truth? Before whose eyes Jesus Christ had been evidently set forth, crucified among you? Now, he's going to ask them a question, okay? And I'm going to ask you the same question. This only would I learn of you. Okay, Carlos, Patricia, John, love. Did you receive the spirit? Did God give you his spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Hearing of faith. Okay, so he gave it to you, the spirit to you, not through the works of the law, because by, by the works of the law, no flesh shall be what? Justified. Right. So you know you receive the spirit by the hearing of faith. And then look what he says to these Christians. Are you so foolish? Having begun in the spirit, right? Yes. Having begun by faith, are you now made what? Perfect by the faith. Are you now made perfect by the works of the law? Right. So if you believed upon Jesus, if that's how you received his spirit is through faith, you know how you're made perfect? It's not by the works of the law. It's by the what? Faith. It's by yeah. faith. So the same way that you receive Christ by taking by taking the what? The blood and putting it on it and just staying in your house and believing upon God that he was going to save you is the same way. See, he give you a clue as to what the works are for. See, right. if God counts your faith as righteousness, right? Right. And he doesn't count your works as righteousness. He's giving you a clue right here of what the works are for. And I'm going to show you in just a second, I promise. I'm going to show you what the works are for because it seems like if you don't know how to write the divine scripture, it seems like you don't need works. Right. But yet we know we, we, know we need works because if Noah hadn't built the ark, right, guess what? He wouldn't have been saved. He Lord. wouldn't have been he, Yeah. That to me, when you say a while ago about uh, when they put the blood on the on the doorpost on the lentils and stuff, that's um to me that's a that's a picture of work. They had to work. They had to actually do the blood on the doorpost, or they wouldn't have gotten saved. Yeah, that's and that, and I think that's the closest thing that you can get to faith. Right. In other words, 
it is sense in a sense it's a type of work right yeah. he says um he says he says there's a scripture that says uh how do we work the works of god he says this is the work of god that you ought believe yes and so so that them putting that door putting that putting that blood is a picture of faith it's a picture of them believing right now um Sorry. he goes on he says have you suffered so many things in vain if it be yet in vain right. he therefore that minister to you the spirit and work of miracles among you look what it says doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith even as abraham what believed, believed god. god and it was accounted to him for what righteousness Know ye therefore that they which are of works of faith, the same are the what? Children, the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the heathen through what? Faith. So it's not by works. So he justified the heathen through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham, saying, In thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many are as of the works of the law are under the what? Curse. So if you think that you can be, get into the kingdom, if you think that you can stand before God and be found righteous based upon your works, guess what you're under? Under the curse. So you, when we're doing good works, it is not because we think that we will be found righteous before God. Right. Okay. For it is written, cursed is everyone that continueth. That's why he says that you can keep the whole law and offend in what? One point and you're guilty. Right. So, so if you're, if you're under the curse, it's written, cursed is everyone that continueth not in what? How many things? All things. Which are written in the book of the law to do then you if you want to be if you want to be justified before god at the judgment seat through your own works you have to continue in all things and do all things you you cannot you can never sin and everything everything wow. that's in the law you would have to what keep it do you'd it. have to keep it to be justified by works and guess what no one can do that and that's what he says but that how many men Amen. no man is justified by the law in the sight of god it is what evident. evident for the just shall live by faith and the law is not of what faith. okay and what does it what what else does the scripture say it says that whatsoever is not of faith is sin and the law is not a faith. Therefore, trying to keep the law and do the works of the law to be found righteous is sin. The man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ has redeemed us from the what? From the curse of the law. All right. He says, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by what? The faith of Jesus Christ, even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be what? Just Justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall what? No, no flesh or no man be what? Just justified. <laughs> but if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. Now look what he says. Because this is what he was trying to tell them earlier in, Gal uh, in Galatians chapter 3. He says, if I build again, because remember before you believed upon Jesus, how were you trying to be found? Uh, how, what were you doing to try to be righteous in God's eyes? You were doing all these works, right? You were trying to be a good person, to do more good than bad, all these different things you are doing, and you realize that it's not of works, it's by faith. So once you believe upon Jesus, if you try to build again the things which you already destroyed, guess what you're doing? I make myself a what? 
That that's why that's why he said up here. He says, received you the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect by the flesh? Having begun in the spirit, he says, if I build again those things which I destroyed, guess what? I'm a transgressor. He says, what shall we say then that the Gentiles, which follow not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness? In other words, they didn't follow after the law. They followed after Christ, even the righteousness, which is of what? Faith. But Israel, which followed after what? The law. They have not attained. See, these did not follow the law. They attained to the righteousness because it was only by faith, right? These, right? They did not follow. They did follow after the law, but they haven't attained to the law of righteousness. You know why? Because why, why did not the Israelites attain unto the righteousness of faith? Because they sought it not by what? By faith, but by the what? Works. They were trying to be found righteous, right? And what does it say up here? He says the law is not of faith, right? You're under the curse. If you're trying to seek righteousness through your works, you are what? Under the curse. Right. So now, so 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 if you so what did he tell the Galatians? Think about what he told the Galatians. You began and did you did you begin? One more time. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? The hearing of faith, right? Yes. So since you began, that that's the way you began was by the hearing of faith. Guess we guess how you should continue? In faith. In faith. We walk by what? Faith. So the question is going to come up, and I keep saying it, but I'm going to get to it. What are works for? Because Carlos and Trisha, John and Love, John and Love, they've been going out. They've been uh, they've been doing these things. They've been working. They're right. helping people, right? They're ministering to people. They're feeding people. They're helping people with their home. They're doing all these things. That I want you to understand something, John and Love, and and I think you and Carl, Carlos and Patricia, I think y'all understand this. Those works are not going to make you righteous. So I'm going to show you why are you doing the work? If they're not going to make you righteous, if faith is what makes you righteous, then why are you doing them? Why are you doing works if you, all you need is faith? Because process. what most because what most people don't understand is faith. You need pure faith. Right. Okay. When God says He counts your faith as righteousness to get to attain unto the kingdom, you have to have. Perfect faith. You have to have pure faith. So what, what is pure silver? Pure silver is silver that has no dross, right? And what must you do to make that silver pure? Put it in the fire. You put it in the fire. You melt the silver down. You pull out all the, the dross, all the dirt, all the, the particles that aren't silver, completely taken out. And then... When that thing hardens again, it is what? It's pure silver, right. right? So what is pure faith? Does pure faith have doubt? No. Okay, so, so here's the question. So when the children put the blood on the doorpost, did they have perfect faith? Mm. If they had perfect faith, they could have went up and taken the land. They had faith, but not perfect. God, just like silver, has to be purified in heat, right? Right. But that's why they had to go through the wilderness. That's why God put them through the trials, was because he doesn't just expect faith. He expects perfect faith. Yes. So when he says, go kill the giants, guess what? It's not because you're not going to kill the giants because Caleb is not going to kill the giants because, because he's righteous. He's not going to, just because he picks up the sword doesn't mean he's going to kill the giants. He's going to kill the giants because of his faith. Right. Because who's going to go before him and kill the giants? God. 
God is. But what did his faith make him do? Even though, mm-hmm. even though he, 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 listen, Joshua and Caleb went through the wilderness. Right. Their faith was what? Perfected. Sure. So when God said, go do it, guess what they did? Did they have any doubt? No. Caleb said, let us go right now. So God understands that when Caleb and Joshua first came out of bondage, their faith was not what? Sure. Their faith was not perfect. Joshua's faith was not perfect. Caleb's faith was not perfect. But guess what God did through in the wilderness and through all the trials? He, so some of those children, even though all of them were heirs to the inheritance, did all of them get the inheritance? No. So the faith that he, when he says he counts your faith as righteousness, when he says that that you have to have faith to get into the kingdom, he means perfect faith. There can't be any dross. There can't be any doubt. Unless you be converted and become as a little child, you shall in no wise enter in the kingdom. So tonight, when when John and love, when your three children go to sleep, when, when Johan lays down his head and goes to sleep tonight, you think that he's worried about his dad, where his food's going to come from tomorrow? No. You think he's worried about where he's going, where, where his house is going to be, where he's going to sleep, what, if he's going to have any clothes? No. He's not worried about it. That's why he says, unless you be, conver- be converted, he's talking to us grown adults. We have to be like children. We have to trust in our father that I don't need to be worried about where my food's coming from tomorrow. When I lay down tonight, I don't need to worry about where my clothes are coming from. I don't have to worry about any of those things. See, that's pure faith. You know children have pure faith when it comes to their parents? Yes. When they go to bed, they're not, they don't have any doubt that that when they wake up tomorrow, there's going to be food. They don't worry. They don't worry. Well, and what profit does it mean to, what does it mean to worry when, can you, can you make one hair white or black? No. Can you grow one inch? No. Just worrying isn't going to change anything. So God expects us. Listen, so so here's the question. When let me I'm gonna take you back up here and I'm gonna show you remember the story of Abraham, right? Let me go back up here. Right? So he made he made a promise to Abraham. He says, He that shall come forth out of your own bowels, in other words, your own seed, Abraham, is going to be like the what? The stars, right? Yes. And Abraham did what? Believe. Mm -hmm. So that was Abraham's initial belief. that He believed God. Do you think his faith was perfect? No. You know why I know it wasn't perfect? Because it took him on the mountain. (laughs) Well, think, think about this. He was promised a seed. Right. What did him and Sarah do? Did they wait for God to bring that seed? No. They <laughs> went and had Ishmael. Uh-huh. Even though his he had faith, his faith wasn't what? Pure. It wasn't pure. It was he had doubt. If he right. didn't if he had had no doubt in his faith, he would have waited upon who? Waited on the Lord. He waited on the Lord. So his faith wasn't even though he had so understand God understands where you're at, Carlos, where you're at, Patricia, where you're at, John, where you're at, love, and where I'm at. He understands that we have faith, and he counts that as righteousness, but God is going to put us through trials to purify our faith. Right. And I told you that works, the reason we do the works is not because they're, they're, they're going to make us righteous. The works are the very thing that is going to purify And perfect our what? Faith. That's what the works are for. for, To purify our faith. To perfect our faith. Listen. Noah, by faith, right, being warned of God, moved with fear and what? He did. God, listen. God didn't. God counted Noah's faith as his righteousness. He became heir of righteousness by his faith. How did he perfect his faith? By building the what? Art. The ark, building the ark didn't make him righteous. All the ark did was perfect his faith. Watch this. I'll show you something. Abraham stretched forth his hand and he took the knife to do what? 
Jesus. Slay a son. God had told, told him, he said, you know what I want you to do? I want you to kill your only son, your only begotten son. The, the, the son that I promised you, Abraham, that I promised you through, through Isaac, that your seed would be like the stars of, that was a promise that God, can God lie? No. God can't lie. And I'm going to show you, this is when Abraham's faith was perfected. It was through his work that he was going to do. Because right. Abraham already believed God, but God had to put him through a bunch of different trials, right? And so he gets to this point in his life, and now God is going to perfect Abraham's faith because it's faith that God counts as righteousness. So he's going to use the work to perfect it. Now look what he says. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here am I. And he said, Lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. Now look what God says to him. Now I what? I know that you fear me. I know that you believe me. You know why? Because I can what? I can see it. Seeing thou, thou hast not what? Withheld thy son. So Abraham had went through this journey and God is now telling him, I know that you have perfect faith in me. You know why? Because I can what? I can see it. You know how God knew that, you know how God knew? Put Noah, let's put, put Noah here. Noah, I know that you fear me seeing that you have built the what? Ark. You know what? John, love, I know that you fear me. I know that you believe me, seeing that you're doing the things I told you to do. That's how you perfect your faith. Look what he says. By faith, Abraham, when he was what? Tried. Tried. You have to go through the fire. That's how you purify faith. You purify silver, silver when it is tried in fire. He by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac and he that had received the promises, because the promise, what was the promise? That through Isaac, his seed was going to be like the what? Stars. The stars of heaven without yeah. number, right? Right. So if you killed him, if you killed him and God had made a promise to you, right? And God can't lie. If you killed him, what was God going to have to do? Raise him up. And that's what Abraham knew. By faith, when Abraham was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises, offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said that I and Isaac shall be thy seed, shall thy seed be called. Look what it says about Abraham. Accounting that God was able to what? Praise him. He was going to kill him because he knew that God couldn't lie. Right. That God was going to have to raise back up Isaac because he made a promise. Right. That is the perfecting of your faith. The, how much doubt was there? You know, it says that when God told him to go, you know what he did? He rose up early in the morning. Yeah. He saddled his ass. He took some men with him. He, he didn't hesitate. He went up to sacrifice his son. But he did it knowing something that God was able to walk because God couldn't lie. So do you see what works are for? The works are to what? To purify and to perfect your faith. Because God knows that you believe him. <coughs> God will know that your faith is perfect when he what? See. He sees you doing what you, he has told you to what? See. To do. You can say, you listen. You can, God can say, do this. And you say, okay, I believe you, God. But that, does that mean you're going to do them? No. If you're not doing them, you, is your faith perfect? No. So you have to actually show God. God has to see you doing the things to know. Because if he's going to count your faith as righteousness, you have to have perfect, pure faith. God says, do it. You do it. Right. Now, look what, he, look what he says, and, 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 and James is going to tell you the exact same thing. What doth it profit? 
my brethren, though a man say he has faith and have not what? Works. Can faith save him? And see, it sounds to all these believers, they think, oh, they see that it's a contradiction. No, it's not a contradiction. Faith can't save you if faith isn't perfect. He didn't, he, he didn't say, he didn't say all people who believe are going to be saved into the kingdom. The only way you listen, did all the people who believed upon put the blood on the door get into the land, the inheritance, get into the, the land of Canaan? No. No. Only those who had perfect faith. When they when when what did Caleb say? Quit listening to these 10 spies who are telling you we can't take the land. And guess what? Right, let's go, let's go up right now, grab your sword, let's go and take the land. That is pure faith. <coughs> These men had what? Doubt. Well, you see, we're like grasshoppers. And now God understands something, though, guys. He understands your faith might not be perfect yet. So that's why he says, don't be, hey, don't act as like some strange thing happened to you when this trial comes along. You know why? Because what's the trial for? To perfect your what? To perfect your faith. There's a reason God puts you through the trials. There's a reason he put them through the wilderness. There's a reason it took 120 years to build the ark. Abraham's faith wasn't perfect or he would have never had Ishmael. Right. Amen. God understands where you're at in your walk. He just wants you to walk in faith believing that he is purifying you, that he is perfecting your faith. Now look what he says. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto him, depart in peace, be ye warmed, right, and filled. Notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body. You know, you have, you can help them. They, are they don't have clothes. They don't have food. And you can help them, but you don't give it to them. You know you're supposed to. You believe you're supposed to, right? You have faith that you're supposed to, but you don't. You don't do it. What's it going? To, what profit is that? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is what? It's dead. <clears throat> you cannot. Works are the things that perfect. Your faith. God doesn't count your works as righteousness, guys. Works has another purpose. It perfects you. It purifies your faith. Now, Louis says, and this is what James, this is the conclusion for James. Yea, a man may say thou hast faith and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works. And that's what most believers do, right? They say, well, I believe this, and I believe that, and I believe this. But guess what they don't have? In, don't have. They don't have any works. See, you can sit here all you want as a believer in the kingdom, and you can tell people all you want what you believe. They cannot see inside your mind, and they cannot see inside your heart. All they can see is the what? The outside. And that's why he says, I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you my faith. I'm going to show you my faith and my belief in God. And you know how I'm going to do it? You know how I'm going to prove to every single believer in the world that the kingdom is true and I believe it? How am I going to show it to them? My words. That's why we're, that's, that's the other reason you're doing it. It's not just to purify. It's not just to perfect your faith, guys. It's to show to the, re look, look at that word. I'm going to show you I believe God by my what? Words. What did what remember what God says? Now I know you believe. Now I know you believe and fear me, Abraham, because I can what? See. And what does James say? I'm going to they're going to know. I'm going to show it to them. I'm going to show them that I believe God. I'm going to show them I believe in the doctrine of the kingdom. You know how I'm going to show them? Because I'm going to pick up the knife and I'm going to sacrifice my son. I'm going to build the ark. I'm going to show them by good works that I believe God. All right. 
So, does everybody understand that? Yes. Because we're going to get into the second part of the study, which you have to understand that part, and then this part will make complete total sense to you. Whoops. Does everybody, does everybody understand that? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for the reformation. I didn't see it, John. <laughs> I couldn't remember it. <laughs> um, so anyway, so now that you understand that the only thing that God will ever count as righteousness is your what? Is your faith. But you have to have works because it is the works that they, they not only perfect and purify your faith because you have to have perfect faith. They also, they're going to do something else. Your works, if you believe God and you do works, God is going to teach you that it is your works that you do and men see that is going to get you fruit. It's going to bring, listen, it's going to save your family. <clears throat> listen, guys, what I'm telling you, because this is going to be important. This is going to be what saves your family and your friends. Okay. Right. And it came to pass. So I'm going to read through Mark real quick. And Mark is not like Luke or Matthew. He's going to, he's not going to get into all the details. Um, and so we're going to go back to the ministry and Christ being anointed king. And I want, I want you to, I want you, I want you to see something. It says, and it came to pass in those days that Jesus, uh, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan, right? And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. So we know that this is the anointing of God the Father as Jesus became the king. Okay. And so as soon as he becomes king, we know we know what happens next. He goes, immediately the spirit driveth him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness 40 days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beast, and the angels ministered unto him. And he don't get into all the temptation like Matthew and Luke does. He's just giving you a very brief description, right? So, so he's anointed the king. He's went through his trials. And remember what Matthew and Luke tell you. When he comes down, he comes down in what? Power. Right. He did not give in to the devil. He he didn't do what what uh, Adam and Eve had done. Right. right. So. It was at that point after that, John was put into what? So John the Baptist is thrown into prison. Now, remember, John the Baptist was the forerunner, right, to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And what was John the Baptist preaching? Repent for what? The kingdom, the kingdom is at hand, right? Yes. So now John's thrown into prison, and he can't preach that anymore, can he? <coughs> so after John was put into prison, in prison, Jesus came, and what was he doing? Preaching the kingdom. He's going to start preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And saying the time is fulfilled, and guess what? The, kingdom the kingdom's at hand. You need to, what does he tell the believer? You need to repent and what? Believe and believe the gospel of the kingdom. Because you can miss the kingdom. Yes. Now, as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he, what's the next thing he does? He starts putting together his government, right? He calls Simon and Andrew his brother. He saw them casting, their, uh, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Now, I want you to notice what Jesus says to them. Because this is one of the reasons Jesus came the first time. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me. And I will make you to become what? That is the reason, one of the reasons he came. He came to make Carlos, Patricia, John, Love, and me fishers of what? Me. And straightway they forsook their nets, and guess what they did? They followed him. Now, now let's look at a story. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, we also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And now look what it says. So they're, what are they doing? They're fishing, right? Right. And they go into the ship and all night long, they're, they're fishing. 
And that night, guess what? Now, Jesus is going to, he, he's going to teach you a spiritual lesson, lesson okay? Because he says, I will make you to become what? But they're catching nothing. So when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus saith unto them, children, have you any meat? And of course, they hadn't caught anything, right? <laughs> so they said, no. And now look what Jesus says. He says, and he said unto them, cast the net on the right side of the ship and what? You'll find it. And they cast therefore. And now they were not able to draw, draw it for the what? There was so many fish, they couldn't even pull in the net. So I'm going to ask you a question. What was it they did to catch so many fish? Put it on the right side. <laughs> okay. And that's what most people think the answer is. And that's not the answer. <laughs> I'm going to let you, I'm going to give you another story and I'm going to ask you again, okay? What did they do to catch so many fish? And, and now watch. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and, pr and, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. Now, when he had left speaking, he said unto si Simon, launch out into the deep and what? Let down, let down your nets for a draft. Right? And Simon answered and said unto him, Master, we have toiled all the night and have taken what? Nothing. Just like before. Nevertheless, what's that say? No. At thy word, I will what? Let down the net. So did they catch the fish because they let down the net? Did they catch the fish because they put it on the right side of the ship? Or did they catch the fish because... They did what he told them to do. Exactly. You want to become a fisher of men. It's not that you put the, the net down on the right side or the left side or here or there or whatever. You will catch fish if you will what? Listen to his what? Word. His word. And so when they had done this, because it, it didn't matter whether it was the right or left, it's what he said to do. Right. I didn't mean the right or the left, like the right or the left. I meant the right, proper way. <laughs> okay. I, I wasn't trying to embarrass you. I oh, no, just... no, no. That's what, yeah, I understand. So, 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 so if you want to learn, look what he says up here. I will make you to become fishers of men. And they followed him. So if you will follow him, guess what he's going to make you do? To, he's going to make you to be able to catch men. Now, let me ask you, do we have a lot of men that we need to catch? Yes. Do you know right now, and, and like I said, I only pick on the Baptist church because that's the, that's the church that I spent most of my life in. It doesn't matter whether it's Catholic. It doesn't matter whether it's Methodist, Church of God, Seventh-day. It doesn't matter. Right. Okay? I'm just saying Baptist because you know, at one time I was an ordained Baptist pastor. Um. I spent most of my life in the Baptist church. And so that's why I'm using them. But this could apply to any modern day church, what we call the modern church, right? Right. Do you know right now there are people in those churches that are, de that are dead? They just, they have no life. They don't do any works. They believe everything they're told. Amen. Do you know that God wants you to save them? Yes. And I'm going to teach you how to become what? Fishers, Fishers of men. I'm going to teach you how to pull those men out of those churches and save them. You hear what I just said, right? Yes. Out save of those them. buildings. We're going to save men out of those buildings. Isn't that a shame that we have to do that? Yes. It's a shame that we have to. But they're, but all they're doing, they're dying. They are dead, sitting in their pews right now. They're dead. Yes. They have no life in them. They're not doing anything for the Lord. They believe everything they're taught. So I'm going to teach you how to catch men. Now, look what it says. And so 
We've told all night, have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their net break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were, worth, were in the other ship, that they should come and help. And they came. And look how much fish it was. They filled what? Ships. Don't you want to be that type of fisherman? Amen. If you'll just listen to the Lord, guess what he's going to do? He's going to fill your boat with ship. Uh, he's going to fill your ship with, uh, with fish to the point that it begins to what? Sink. That's what we're going to do, guys. This is what this ministry about it. You know what? It, it began with me, Patricia, and Carlos. Well, it began with the Lord. Amen. And listen, God is going to use us powerfully. And I'm going to prove that to you. So when Simon Peter saw this, guess what he's going to do? He's going to fall down at Jesus' knees. Depart from me. I'm a, I'm a simple man, oh Lord. All he did was listen. listen. They had they had told, told. You know what the word told means? They worked. They labored all night, and they got what? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> We've been told in our entire Christian life to do what? <laughs> to get other believers to believe in the kingdom. Right. How That's successful have we been? Not very. <laughs> not very successful. Nevertheless, Lord, at your word, guess what? We're going to do what you say to do now. Right. And I'm going to show you what the Lord, because he's taught us in his word how to be fishers. And we're getting ready to start doing this, guys. We're already doing it, but I'm going to show you what it is. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to bring in a great multitude of men. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to, I'm going to show you. And when you see it, all you got to do is believe and do the work right now and so um so he said depart with me for i'm a simple man O lord for he was astonished and all that were with him at the draft of the fishes which they had taken in and so was also james and john the sons of zebedee which were partners with simon and jesus said unto simon fear not from henceforth guess what shall catch me and 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 I'm going to show you how to do it. And when they had brought their ships to the land, they forsook all. And guess what? They followed him. Followed him. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to catch men. And Jesus went about all Galilee. Now look at the things he's doing. Teaching. Preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Kingdom. And, and what? Healing. Healing. These are his works. And guess what? When he's doing his works, guess what happens? His fame went throughout what? All Syria. Yes. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases and torments, those which were possessed with devils and those which were lunatic and those that had the salt palsy. And guess what he did? He healed them. He healed them. He was teaching. He was preaching. He was healing. And guess what? When he started to do all these things, it's yeah. not a matter of what you just believe. People have to see that you believe what you say you believe. Amen. And guess what happened? And there followed him what? Right most of you people. Remember what they called up here? Great, Great multitudes of what? Ish. But he's going to teach you to do what? Catch men. Catch men. And that's how you do it. You teach, you preach, and you show good works. Look what he says. That, because that's the problem with the church nowadays. He says, feed the flock, which is among you. Taking the oversight, not by what? Straight. Did Jesus ever make anybody believe upon him? Did Jesus ever make anybody uh, no. do, do, do works? Did they, did you, do you have to do anything? No. You don't have to do anything if you don't want to. But he's commanding that the people who are going to be his pastors, that they feed the flock. And they're not to do it by constraint. You're not to make them. You, don't have, you can't make them come to church on Sunday. And you can't make them go to a building. 
and you're not to do it by you. you that's not how we do it. They need to willingly follow you. Yes. And they're not, you're not to do it for what? Money. If you're doing it for money, you're not his pastor. You're not his shepherd. You know what you are? <laughs> what does he call it? You're a hireling. Yes. We don't do it for money, guys. Right. You don't do it. Don't do it neither as being what? Lords. You're, you're not over anyone. You're to do it being what? Examples to the flock. You, you listen, you, the works that you're doing do not make you righteous. The works that you do are going to perfect, purify your faith, but also the works that you do will make other people know that you believe what comes out of your mouth. Isn't that what James said? Let's go back up one more time. Look what James said. He says, I will show you my faith. I'm going to show you what I believe is true based upon my what? Works. My works. Because how, how is that showing them? Because they can literally, when you show somebody something, that means to what? They can see it with their what? Their eyes. Their eyes. I, you want to know whether I believe in the kingdom? Watch me. Look what I'm doing. You'll know whether I believe in the kingdom. You'll know I believe what I say I believe. You are to be an example to the flock. And you know what? When you show people through your works, guess what? That when the chief shepherd shall come back, when Christ comes back, and you stand at the judgment seat, guess what? You're going to get a crown because you didn't do it for money. Right. You you didn't do it because you wanted praise of men. You did it because you believed God and you believe that he's a rewarder. And listen, I, it doesn't matter what other people think. The way that you fish for men is men have to see with their eyes. Remember what, what, how did, remember what God said to Abraham? Now I know you fear me because I can see, right? When you pick up that knife and you do what God says to do, he can see it, but not only he can see it. When you do good works, guess what? Men can what? See it. And when they come to you and say, why do you do these things? You, you must be righteous. No, 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 no. I'm not, no, I'm not righteous. I do it because I believe God. I believe that he's a rewarder. Now. Let your light so shine before me. Let me see you. You got that scripture on there? What do you think? <laughs> I think, say, if you hadn't got them, I'm going to smack you good. <laughs> then said he also to him that bade him. And listen, guys. Here's, here's how you can always make sure that your motive is pure. When you make a dinner or a supper, call not who? Your friends or your brethren or your kinsmen, and especially not what? Rich. Your rich neighbors. Because they can pay you back. Right. And that's your reward. If they pay you back, that's your reward, right? Lest they also bid thee again, and a recompense be made thee. In other words, you gave something to them, they gave something back to you. You've been recompensed. That, right. that deed you did, you got paid for it. You're only going to get paid for it once. Right. But when you make a feast, guess what? Call, Call the, poor. the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and you'll be blessed. You know why you'll be blessed at the judgment seat? Because that poor person will never, ever be able to what? Pay you back. Pay you back. You know when you're going to get paid, get paid back? For thou shalt be recompensed at the what? The That's test. when you'll get paid back. Yeah. And when people, listen, when people see you doing these works for the poor, they can't say, oh, you're doing it because you're trying to get favor from this person or this person. No, they're poor. They can't pay me back. Right. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus come forth, and he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. 
and his face was bound about with a napkin, Jesus saith unto him, uh, unto them, loose him and let him go. Now look, look, this is his works. These are the works that Christ are doing before men, and they can see with their what? Eyes. Eyes. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had what? Seen. seen the things with their own eyes, what Jesus did, guess what? That's how you're going to be a fisher of men. When they see the things that you do, they're going to believe. That's how you fish for men. Because when, let me, let me ask you this. When you go to a regular church, right? Right. You know what you hear when a poor person, I'm going to use a poor person as an example. When a poor, poor person in the Philippines goes to a church, this is what they're told. They say, if, if you tithe and you give your, your percentage to God, your 20%, what is it, 10%? 10%? 10%? Yeah. When you give your money to God, he's going to bless you. Right. And you know what? And they go and they go and they go and they go and they go. And you know what? All The only thing they see? They don't learn anything. They All they do is they get poorer. And the only people they see profit is the pastors. Exactly. That's all. The, the only person they're seeing God blessing is the pastor. So guess what? So they leave. They have no faith. So now, now we have opportunity to show them that God loves them. Right. And the only way they're going to know if God loves them is what? If they see it. And I'm going to show you that. Yes. So when they had seen the things which Jesus did, they believed on him. But some of them went their way to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests. There's the modern day pastors. You know, that, that John at Love, that Carlos and Trish and Mark, they're down there helping them poor people. You know, they should be coming to church on Sunday and give, uh, giving us tithes. Right. He says that, that they gathered together and said, what are we going to do? For this man doeth many miracles. They, they knew, they saw the same miracle, the same miracles that caused a lot of people to believe on him. They saw these same miracles and you know what they did? They wanted to kill him. He says, if we let him thus alone, guess what? You know why? Why multitudes of people will follow him? Because they can see his works. They know that he's sent from God. And they will know if you're sent from God. When you're doing these works, when you're helping people, it's not, those works will never make you righteous, but they will perfect your faith and they will, they will draw men right. to, the, to you. They're going to bring in multitudes of fish for you. He says, all men will believe on him. And the Romans, here, here's the reason they, 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 they conspired to kill him. Now look, and the Romans shall take away what? Wow. Our place. They were, preserved. they were worried about their, their building, their temple, their status, their position, because they were the ones that were supposed to be teaching people about God. Yes. They were the ones that were supposed to be, if, if every time these men would go away, if look, they were taking, he was taking away people from them. Guess what? The, guess what? When you take away the person, all the money they were given gets, guess what? They were losing. It goes, they lose that money. They were worried. They were worried about their money and they were worried about their position. Right. And, and do you think Christ was worried about that? No. No. And, and let me ask you this, guys. Should you be worried about it? No. I am not worried about one thing about what anybody in any church believes. Right. I'm not worried about what they think. We are commanded to do these things. Right. And you know what you're going to do when you start to do these things, right? You're going to help pull men out of these churches. Now, what, watch this. He says, much people of the Jews, therefore, knew that Christ was there. And they came not just for Jesus' sake only, but that they might what? Lazarus. Because whom he had raised from the dead. They, they, they wanted to see this man who was dead, and Jesus had raised him, raised him up. Right. But here they are again. The chief priests consulted that they might, look, 
how sad is this? Put Lazarus also. What did Lazarus do that they would want to put him to death? He was an example. He should tell people what the Lord had raised him up. They seen it. Uh, all he, all yeah, all Lazarus had done. <laughs> All Lazarus was doing by his testimony was taking away from them. He didn't do nothing evil. I mean, Lazarus, Lazarus was just dead and God raised him up. That's, that's it. He didn't do nothing. But these men wanted to put him to death. Here it says, because that by reason of him, many of the Jews, here it is, went away. what? Went away. Went away. There goes their, their, hey, here goes our place. Here goes our money. That's right. And that's what's going to start happening. When you start showing these good, doing these good works, and people start believing in the kingdom and believing in the truth, a lot of the people from these churches are going to start leaving the church. Uh -huh. And when they start leaving, right, when they start, when they, they went away, they're taken away, when they start going away out of the, where the, the, where the pastors are, they're going to get upset. You know why? It's going to affect their reputation and their finances. Right. And they're not going to like you very much. Right. And should we care about that? No. No. We should not care about that at all. He's God. He says, Believest thou not that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Yes. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me. Here's why I want you to believe me for the what? The very work's sake. The very work's sake. He says that when he. One time he fed thousands of people with just a few fish and a few loaves of bread, right? Yes. And he said, that's why you guys believe upon me. It's because you saw you saw what I did with the with the with the fish and with the loaves of bread. It was the it was his works that caused people to what? To believe upon him. What what happened when Lazarus was raised to that? Many believed upon him. What happened when he healed these people? People believed upon him. What happens when you do works? Look what look what look what look what he says about me and you, Carlos, and you, Patricia, and you, John, and you, Love, and you too, Lewis Palmer. He says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that here's Jesus speaking, the works that I do, guess what you're gonna be able to do? Your mouse. You're going to be able to do them also. But you know what, John? You know what, love, Carlos Patricia? Greater works than thee shall, shall what? Yeah. You're going to be able to do greater works than even Christ did. See, we shouldn't just set our hearts on just, just barely getting into the kingdom. We shouldn't set our hearts on just planting a few seeds. Because if you, you sow sparingly, you're going to reap sparingly. But he that soweth bountiful shall what? Reap bountiful. We yes. want an abundant I don't want when I die, I don't there, want there to be any question that I'm getting into the kingdom. Right. I want an abundant entrance into the kingdom. And the only way that we're going to do that is to prove to the rest of the world that we believe God. And how did James say you prove it? Right. I'm going to prove to you that I believe God by my what? Right. My works. Noah proved that he believed God. You know how he proved that he believed God? He, moved, he, he built the ark. Right. You know how Abraham proved that he believed God? He took his son up sacrificing. Right. You know how you're going to prove that you believe God? By doing the very things that he's commanded you to do. Yes. Help the poor. When yes. we distribute Bibles, when we show kindness, when we show mercy... We are, we are proving to the rest of the world and especially to the church, to those believers who are not faithful, to those believers who do not believe in the truth. We're proving to them that we believe everything we say. I'm not just telling you that I can miss the kingdom. I'm proving to you that I believe I can miss the kingdom if I don't do these things. Right. He says, let us draw near with a true heart in what? Assurance. Assurance. Faith. Assurance. That is faith. That is freedom from what? 
That is pure faith. That is without doubt. Remember, I told you, it's not just a matter of having faith, guys. You have to have pure, perfect faith, just like a child. Remember, unless you be converted and become his little children, you have to believe that when God says something, just do it. Believe God says, go kill the giants. You know yeah. what? You can't wait. Remember, there are some people who waited till like the next day or a couple of days later, and they said, okay, we'll go kill the giants now. Right. What did Moses say? Y'all better not. That's right. When God says, go do it, you do it then. Because they wanted to go do it in their own power. And guess what? They end up dying. God wants you to have full assurance of faith. No doubt. Right. Having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us, all five of us, hold fast the profession of our faith. You know what to profess something means? That means the thing that we believe we're going to profess our faith, and we want to do it without what? We're not going to waver. We're, we're professing. I profess to the world that I believe in the kingdom, the doctrine, the gospel of the kingdom. I believe that, and I will not waver from that. You know why? Because the Father is faithful. He's faithful, that promised, right? He <coughs> promised. He can't lie. And I want you to look. This is what This is our... This, this is our duty to one another, okay? This is our duty. This is John's duty to all four of us and love's duty to the other four of us and Carlos's duty and Patricia and mine to y'all's. We are to what? Consider one another. And to what? Provoke. What does provoke mean? To call to action, to arouse, to excite, to stimulate, to challenge, to stare up, to induce my motives. It is my job to excite you, to provoke you to what? Love and what? God's not unrighteous to forget them, guys. You only got so much time. It's our job to consider one another, to provoke one another. Listen, that's how you're going to catch men, is through your good works. The works are not going to make you righteous. But the works are going to draw men. He says he's going to draw all men to, to God. He says we are not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. That's what we're doing right now as the manner of some. But to what? We are to consider one another. We are to provoke one another. We are to exhort one another. You know what exhort means? To encourage, to embolden, to advise, to incite by words, right? Listen. I encourage you, I provoke you unto love and to good works. Not just because those things are going to perfect your faith and purify your faith, but they're going to say, listen to what I'm just getting ready to say. Those are the things that are going to save those, those family members and friends that you've been praying for that would believe in the kingdom and, would, and, and God would change their heart. This right here is the only thing that's going to do it. Because they can't see your faith inside of you. You have to do it outwardly. It's the only way they can see it, guys. Right. You have to prove to them that you believe God. Yes. For though, Paul says, for though I be free from all men, because we have liberty, right? We're not, we don't have to go to the Baptist church on Sunday anymore, do we? Yeah. I'm free from all that. I'm not under those ordinances, right? I'm not under those. I, I, there's no man. I have, listen, I have one king and I'm free and I have liberty. I'm free from all men. But even though I'm free from all men, yet have I made myself what? Servant to, servant all. to all. I am doing, listen, I am a servant. I am doing these good works to save everybody I can save. I am trying to be obedient. I'm abstaining from all appearance of evil. I'm doing everything that I can so that when these men see me, right, they will know that I believe exactly what I say. Right. He says, you know, and, and here's, here's the purpose. 
because God gave, when he gave, gives you talents and he goes away, when he comes back, he expects you to have what? Do, do, should you bear, bury your talent on, in the ground, guys? Mm -hmm. He wants a prophet, doesn't he? Yes. Isn't that what he said up here? He said, um, oh, I'm sorry. Well, look what it says here. He says, I become the servant of un, uh, unto all that I might what? Gain more. Gain. Make a profit. To the Jews, I became a Jew. You know why? Why? That I might what? Gain. Gain. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might what? Gain. Paul, he was going to make himself a servant to every man. He was going to do everything he could in all his power to be a great fisher of men, nice. to gain. He says, to them that are without the law, as without the law, being not without law of God, but under the law of Christ, then we're under the law of Christ, not under the law of Moses. Right. For what purpose? Gain. That I might gain them. To the weak became I weak, that I might what? Gain. gain the weak. I am made all things to all men. He don't use the word gain this time. That I might by my... That I might by all men's what? Save some. When you save some, when you gain, you're saving somebody. Amen. And that's what he says in Jude. He says, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Keep, listen, guys, keep yourself in the love of God. Keep working. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so, you know what? You, those people that you've been praying for, those family members, those friends, those ex-church members that you used to go to church with. Some, if you have compassion, guess what you're doing? You're making a difference. But others, you're going to save them with what? Fear. Pulling them out. Look, look what he says. He did all these things that he might, by all means, what? By all means, save some. Yes. Some and some of them, you save them with fear, pulling them out of the fire because we know what happens for a thousand years. Right. That's how you become fishers of men, the same way that Christ did. They saw his good works. They saw his good works. They saw the things that he did and they followed him. He didn't have to constrain them. They willingly what? My sheep hear my voice, and they what? I don't have to put a I don't have to put a leash and a collar and a chain on them. No. That's what the modern pastors do, don't they? Yes. They try to leash you and and make you stay there and make you feel guilty and do all. Listen, no. I don't serve any man. Right. I serve my King. He says the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth what. Souls. souls is wise. You know how you win souls? You win them through your works, guys. Right. He says, brethren, if, if you don't just win them through your, your works. Part of your work is, is um, study to show thyself approved. A workman that what? Right. Needs not be ashamed. So you're going to win by being a workman, by studying. He says, brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, so if there's somebody out there right now that you know that's in like the Baptist church and they believe a lie and you convert them, this, this is what you can know. Let him know that he which converteth the sinner from the error of his way shall save that soul from what? Death. Yes. You just won a soul. That means you're wise. You just pulled them out of the what? Fire. Fire. And when you, that's why it's so important to know the scripture. Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to what? Give an answer. Look, now look what he says. To give an answer to every man that asks of you. The, this, this is the reason. We're going to give them. This is our answer. It is our reason that we have hope. That's what we want to tell them. You want to see why I do these good works? You want to know why I believe in the scripture, why I believe this or why I believe that and why I do this and why I do that? This is the reason. It's a reason of the, if, if you will do what God says, he's not unrighteous to what? 
he was not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you showed toward his name. Right. He says, and here's the verse as we start <laughs> to close. You are John and love and cause, but you're the light of the world. People can't see inside of you guys. They can't look into your mind and see what you believe. They can't look into your heart and know what your motive behind doing something. All they can see is the candle and the flame. You're the light in a city that's set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel. You Listen, let people get out there and do your work, but make sure you're doing it for the right motive. Right. And guess what? When you are the light of the world, guess what? It giveth light unto what? All. Let your light so shine before what? That, here's the, here it is, that they may what? They, they can see it. I Guess what? What did he say to Abraham? Now I know you fears me, seeing you have not withheld your only son. Right. Now I know, Noah, now I know you believe me. You built the ark. Now I know, John, and love that you believe me because you're, you're helping the poor. Yes. You're not doing it because you think that you're righteous. You're doing it because you believe me. Mm-hmm. And when you do it, when you believe me and you do those things, you know what God is doing? You're walking in faith and he's perfecting and purifying your faith. Right. And when they see it, when you let your light shine and they see your good works, guess what it does? Glorify it glorifies your father. That's the entire purpose. Amen. You are God's body. You're Christ's body. You are his hands. You are his feet. He's not in the world, guys. He's not in the world in the sense that he's sitting on the right hand of the father. If, if, he, if Christ wants to help the poor, he's got to get part of his body to do what? To do it for him. Yes. If he he needs his right hand. If you're his right hand, John, guess what? If his right hand says, I just don't want to do no work today. I just don't want to help nobody. Then that person, he's not going to be able to help that person. So your light, and when you do good works, the people see it. And that's how that ha- that's how God gets glory. That's how you fish men. Right. That's how you bring men in. Is there... Listen, because when they go into the Baptist church, how much good works are they going to see? No. They're not going to see very much, are they? No. They're going to sit around, they're going to listen to a man, and they're going to give their money, and they're going to go home. And that's it. And we all, five of us, you know why? how we know that? Because we all lived it. Right. He says, dearly beloved, I beseech you, as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts. Don't give in to them. They war against the soul. Have your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they shall what? Well, behold. What does behold mean? See. To see. Right? Observe. When they see your good works, which they are going to see and they're going to behold, guess what they're going to do? They're going to glorify God. When God visits them and lets them know, and they're that day of this day, when he says, you know what? I'm calling you out of that Baptist church. I want you to start working for me. I'm your king. Quit listening to that man that's sitting, that man, that pastor. He's not your king. I'm your king. Right. Amen. Go do, do what I want you to do. See, we need, we need through our good works, guys. Listen, God says that he can accomplish greater works with us than he ever accomplished when he was in the world. That's what we want to do. But we have to continue in these good works for the right motive, guys, to save some, to pull them out of the fire. He says, in all things, there's the word again, showing thyself a pattern of what? In doctrine, showing uncorruptness, gravity, sincerity, sound speech that cannot be condemned. 
that he that is of the contrary, the he that does that 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 contradicts and goes against everything we're trying to preach, they're against all of it, right? That when you do this here, that he that is of the contrary, contrary, guess what? We're going to make them make them be. We're going to make them ashamed because they're sitting here. All they're doing is saying, "Look, oh, you're just doing this and you're doing that and blah blah." And and, and we don't. And the kingdom's not true and all. And by our good, our pattern, our pattern. You know what a pattern means? It doesn't mean we just do it for a little while. It means we have a pattern. We do it all the time. It is our lifestyle. Right. That those people that are speaking against us, they're going to be what? Ashamed. They're going to be ashamed of their self. We are here to the day I die to do this right here. The show a pattern of good works that I, listen, I believe what the scripture says. I believe in the judgment seat. I believe I will receive the things done in my body according to that which I've done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Amen. Knowing the terror of the Lord, I'm persuading you to do the same. The Bible says, oh, no man, anything. Here's our job. To love one another. You know why it's our job? Because he that loveth another have what? So you're going to get in the kingdom. Just continue in what you're doing right now. Do it for the right reason. Be fishers of men. Don't commit adultery. Don't kill. Don't steal. Don't bear false witness. Don't covet. If there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Mm -hmm. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. And therefore, since that is true, love is the fulfilling of the law. Mm -hmm. And that knowing, listen, guys, knowing the time that now it is, guess what? It's high time for us wake to wake up, wake up. It's high. Listen, you want to wake up your family. You want to wake up your friends. You know how you do it. I just showed you how to do it. A pattern of good work. He says, it's high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. It's almost here. The day is at hand. Let us cast off, take, cast, take off the old man, right? Cast off the words of darkness. Let us put on the new man. Let us put on the what? The arm of light. We're not like that anymore. We understand we live in an evil world. We live in a what? Dark, evil world. Yes. And we are lights. Think about that. We are lights in a dark world. Let your light what? So shine before me and they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. Right there. They may see your good works and glorify your Father. And finally, guys, I'll close with this. He says, the people answered him. We have heard out of the law that Christ abided forever. And how sayest thou, the Son of Man must be lifted up? Well, guess what? If the Son of Man be lifted up, guess what he's going to do? Draw him into himself. He's going to draw. That, that's when you're doing good works, guess what? You, who you're lifting up? Jesus. You're lifting up Christ when you do these good works. And therefore, guess what he's going to do? <laughs> He's going to draw men. That's how you fish for men. You lift up Christ in your words, in your speech, in your works. And he, he, you're, listen, you're going to, you're going to cast out your net and you, there's going to be so, such a multitude. You're not going to be able to what? To bring them in. Yes. Then said, then Jesus said unto him, unto them, yet a little while is the light with you. Walk while you have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goeth. While you have light, believe in the light, that you may be the children of light. That's what we are. These things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. Now, this is the thing, guys, and this is the thing you have to understand. You remember what happened when, when Christ raised up Lazarus, you know, many, many people believed upon him. 
But not did all of them believe upon him? Many of them wanted him what? Dead. But though he had done so many miracles and so many good works, right? Before them, yet what? There's a lot of people that that are going to want you, they're just not going to want you around. They're right. going to persecute you for righteousness sake, for doing what's right. They're going to talk bad about you. I, I got one piece of advice. Do not listen to them. Just keep doing what you're doing. That the saying of Isaiah the prophets might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report? And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because that Isaiah said again, He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their heart, that they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted. Yeah, I gotta be converted, mm -hmm. and that I should heal them. These things said Isaiah, when he saw his glory and spake of him. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers also, right? Look what it says. Many believed on him, right? Yes. But because of the Pharisees, they did not want yes. confess him. You know why they didn't confess him? Lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For here is the reason. They loved what? Praise of men. More than the praise of God. Listen, if you're doing the works for the praise of men, you have your reward. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we understand now, guys, we understand how to be fishers of men. Your good works, they will never, ever make you righteous in the sight of God. Your faith is the only thing that can do that. But your good works are to purify and perfect your faith and to bring in men, bring in fish, right? Yeah. All right. So any questions or comments?